So the solution for day 61, let's see if we can build it together. Did I make everything a bit too complicated? <laughs> let's find out. So I'm going to start by importing RepletDB, but I'm also going to import date time because I'm going to need that function. Now, the first thing we need, of course, is a menu. So let's do a while true loop there. And let's start by printing out Twitter, the name of my micro blogging service. So right, uh, let's start with a simple menu system. Uh, let's ask the user what they intend to do. I'm going to add some subroutines in here just to make the menu a little bit nicer. Let's write our first subroutine for adding tweet. So what we're going to do there, we're going to prompt the user for their tweet. Let's put a nice picture of a bird or something as the prompt for that. There we go. The user will type that in and then we need to add that to our replet is that setting a key value is like that. So let's put that within our subroutine first of all. But what's our key going to be? We know what our value is going to be. It's going to be the value of that tweet. Now the key was going to be, the key was going to be MES for message. And we're going to glue that together with timestamp. Now timestamp, that bit of code that I showed you on the screen during the video was this. And this will give us the full date and time, including the milliseconds. So what we're going to do is simply use an F string to combine that together here. So we're going to do mess and then we're going to do time. I'm going to make that the key, and make it equal to the tweet. Now, what might be nice is if I bring in OS and time as well, and I do time.sleep and OS.system clear just to wipe out the screen before going back to that menu. So let's check that works first. I'm going to add a tweet double it's date time dot date time. There we go. Add the tweet. Oh, and I forgot the brackets on sleep. I'm not having a good day today. Am I clearly? <laughs> Hello to Twitter. So I've got the ideas, but sometimes you get those crashing errors. Time dot sleep. Why is this causing a problem? Ah, it's because I've called this time. What a mug. So right, let's call this time stamp. Now, that is an issue that happens a lot. What I did there was I'd imported the library time and then I would used the variable time to store something else, which what that did was it deleted the time library. So you've got to be careful of things like that because muppetry like this is a common occurrence when you do big programming problems. Most programmers get stuck on the little detail like this and not the big detail of solving problems. So let's see if this actually works this time. Hello, Twitter seems to work. So now that should be in my replit DB. So let's write the subroutine that accesses them. I wanted to call it view tweet. And let's access all of those tweets. So what I need to do is get everything that matches with a prefix. And the point of the prefix was that I'm going to get everything with MES in front of it. Remember, everything's got a date and a time associated with it. So I should have it in date order. Um, so let's just start by printing that out, printing out the, um, the matches to show you what that looks like. So if I go to that and I run option two, you'll see that we've got a couple of messages because it has worked every time I've tried it. It's just crashed when it's trying to sleep. But you see what's happened there is we've got the prefix MES and then we've got the full timestamp, even down to a decimalized version of the millisecond, which is amazing. So we've got these actually sorted then in order of when they happened. So if I want to print those backwards, I need to print that array the opposite way around. So I need to print that list the other way around. Now I'm going to show you a little cheat at this point because to reverse an array, I can just do this and that will put it backwards. And that's quite useful if you want to do something like this and reverse the order. Now, all those people that have tried to solve this problem without watching this video will have missed this extra little cheat that you can have on me. So I've now got my matches list backwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do for I in matches. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set a counter here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print using an F string the message. 
and I'm going to print out, in fact, I don't need an S string for this. Uh, I'm going to print out the message. So that's going to be db square brackets i. That's what the index is going to be. I'm then going to print out a blank line and I'm going to do counter plus equals one. I'm going to say if the counter modulo 10 equals zero. So in other words, actually, do you know what I'm going to, yeah, if if I'm if I divide by 10 and I get zero as a remainder, so that means it's completely divisible by 10, I'll be every 10. At that point, I'm going to prompt the user to see if they want to carry on. I'm going to use break there to break out of that loop if they don't want to see any more. Now, after printing each one out, it will probably be nice if I just do time.sleep and pause it for like point three of a second, something like that, so they can see what's going on. And once we've broken out of the loop, let's do time.sleep1 and let's do os.system clear before going back to the menu. So this subroutine is reasonably complicated actually, but the access to the database is really nice. So if we run that now and we go to view tweets, it'll show us. So this complaint here is that a tuple can't be reversed. So a tuple is a list that can't be changed. So let's make it into a list. So my little cheat didn't work there. So let's do this the old fashioned way. Well, I can use a little cheat from our string slicing days. I can say that matches is equal to matches. And I want the start and I want them backwards. And there we go. I get my tweets backwards. So I can keep adding now. And when we get to 10, it'll prompt us to carry on, which is pretty cool.